Madam Salome, over to you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, honorable delegates. My name is Temilade Salami from Nigeria, and I'm the executive director of the Climate Education Leaders Fellowship. My work intersects climate and quality education. I'm also a member of the UNESCO SDG for Youth Network. And today, I sit here to represent the voices of young people across the world. Let me begin by warmly thanking the Kingdom of Morocco for hosting the seventh Confintia and giving us the opportunity to come together to discuss this ever important agenda. On Monday, I participated in the Confintia Seventh Youth Forum, a critical pre-event of this conference as a speaker. While this youth forum is taking place in the context of Confintia, young learners aged 15 and above are nonetheless a core demographic in the adult education agenda and certainly cannot be left behind. Today, young people constitute the largest generation of youth in history. There are currently over 1.2 billion young people aged 15 to 24 years old in the world, representing 16% of the global population. Close to 90% of these young people live in developing countries where they make up large parts of the population. Young people are also disproportionately impacted by the wide-reaching effects on education and learning system. With that being said, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share with you these key insights and takeaways from the Youth Forum Achieving SDG with and for youth. Our first panel on youth employment, literacy, and skill development discussed the challenges facing young people's learning and education. As we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic increased the digital divide for the Global South, indigenous communities, and even teachers themselves. These challenges are even more prominent now, particularly in view of the multiple transitions, such as the technological revolution disrupting our economies and various societies. Therefore, there is a significant need for investment in skills development and accessible digital tools for young learners like me, and also adequate teacher training to supplement the digital needs. During the second panel on green skills for climate change, I had the opportunity to intervene and share my insights on the challenges and opportunities facing the green transition. With companies and institutions increasingly going green, we need to begin to ask ourselves, how can we prepare the young people for this transition? Today's curricula is not fit for what is to come. It was thus reiterated that targeted policies have the potential to change the landscape of green education and climate action, and that there is a need for stronger political will to work with young people to update curricula placing climate education at the center. The discussion made clear that there is a need for more comprehensive policies that are inclusive of all individuals, especially the marginalized communities and those left furthest behind. This brings me to the last panel on Ways Forward, where we also explored the need for synergies, partnerships, and increased support for young people. There is a lot we can really do. As key partners to provide meaningful support for us young people starting with believing in our potential and creating spaces for active participation. Considering this, I would like to leave you all with this message. The multidimensional nature of today's challenges means that lifelong learning for young people must cover a broad spectrum of knowledge and skills. And it has also become clear, however, that young people are already leading the charge in their respective communities and societies. And it is rather up to us First, to listen to the points made on what young people truly want and need. And second, to ensure that we are providing intergenerational support through conducive policies, planning and investment with a focus on those most marginalized. Young people should not be seen as a sole beneficiary. They need to be actively engaged in all stages of the process from consultations, decision making to implementation. Today is a step in the right direction, but it is not enough. Thus, I humbly call on all stakeholders listening here today to ensure that young people always, always have a seat at the table, empowering them to become agents of change. I hope to see this notion reflected in the upcoming discussions at Confintia. As someone wisely said at the just concluded youth forum, nothing without youth is for youth. Thank you so much. Merci, Madame Salamé, pour. Uh Thank you very much for that uh, summary of the Youth Forum and for that uh, very broad-ranging appeal 
on behalf of young people.